I'm Greg Watson and this is my shop here in Butte County. You can see it's in the form of a livestock barn here, but inside it's pretty high tech and we enjoy and benefit from the you know, good woodworking equipment. We're out in farm country and as a person who designs things I wanted to be respectful of the environment. So I built this cabinet shop that we have here not only to be useful as a cabinet shop, uh, in the interior it is, but as also to be respectful and responsive to the, uh, the qualities one associates with uh, a pastoral uh, environment. Well, as long as you're here for a visit, why don't we go on inside and take a look at the cabinet shop. Well, we just uh, come in through the side door of the uh, cabinet shop here at G. Watson Designs. This is the bench area where uh, fellows work at the bench. We have a sort of a amalgam. It's a, it's a classic bench shop where people actually know how to sharpen chisels and use hand planes uh, uh, in addition to the millwork machinery you have. But you see here these great bench setups that guys can work on. Dead flat surfaces for accurate assemblies, a classic cabinet maker's bench associated with each one, and downdraft for when fellows are sanding or working with a dust generating processes, uh, it keeps the area safe and clean, it's nice. Here we have the CNC center, the flat uh, version of it uh, we got from Laguna. We use this for panel processing in general, getting wonderful accurate cabinet parts, but in addition we use it for carving. Uh, here we have a cluster of, uh, covered with dust, but uh, the um, uh, three shapers uh, that we'll, leave, we'll set up for cope and stick processes using for door assemblies and a, uh, an edge banding machine. In the vein of panel processing, we do have a sliding table, table saw, just wonderful. You can uh, get very accurate or rectilinear parts out of it, but you can also do compound miters. This is sort of my uh, shop within the shop. Uh, this alone is a pretty darn nice wood shop. It has the bandsaw I just showed you, a workbench here that's like the others. I also have a lathe and a, uh, a scroll saw for doing fine cutting, a drill press, three more shapers that we usually, leave, we set them up for a variety of things. So we do jig cutting on them or molding generation. Uh, I'm working on a little rustic uh, bench uh, for a mudroom here. Got this wonderful table saw. Uh, People ask uh, occasionally, you know, what's the one tool? This is the one tool. The, the best table saw you could possibly get is the one thing you want to have as a cabinet maker. Better than anything else, you can do so much with it. We, here we have the shaper set up. Our uh, uh, new addition that we got a little over a year ago, this uh, fourth axis uh, CNC um, um, lathe. Uh, it doesn't work as a lathe because it doesn't typically spin the parts to cut them. It works as a milling machine, but it allows us to fabricate. Some of you see a symmetrical turning on here with carved acanthus leaves, but this could be asymmetrical. It could be a cabrio leg. It could be a statue of David, and you could do that on this machine uh, through the, the strategies uh, that it uh, enables you to achieve. The joy that I take in the design process is really the joy of, of seeing the client thrilled. Uh, my objective is to be an advocate for the client's taste. So I learn to understand that person's taste and empathize with the client and then develop designs that represent the, uh, you know, what pleases them. And that's, that's, that's really the focus of the design process for me, is to thrill that client. The CNC technology allowed us to reach forward where we could bring efficiency to that crafting process and use the CNC technology in the case of carvings to uh, uh, do 95 percent of the work then we can finally execute the carvings by hand from that point. Very helpful and really open things up for us and for our clients. Okay what we've done here is chucked this up into uh, the fourth axis machine. I've developed a method where I use a spindle center off of a regular lathe and, and put that in the chuck. That way once this is turned on this machine with all its car details and whatnot, I can take the piece and go directly to the lathe and be working from the same centers. And that way I can uh, do refined details into the piece that are only possible to do with, uh, with uh, turning chisels. Uh, the router on this uses a router and so it's a radius tip. And so one thing that's limited without doing a bunch of different setups is having sharp edge details, fillets and whatnot. So, uh, this is a method I've developed and what I've learned about these machines is that they are not um, automated in the sense that they just do it all for you. You use them the way you use any other machine tool. 
which is to say you direct them, you program them, you tool them up to achieve what you want. Okay, the code's nearing, uh, uh, it's uh, inspecting its code to make sure it all works, it's approaching 100%. At 100%, the spindle fires up, and we'll see uh, how well I programmed it. Well, it looks like uh, the uh, uh, Laguna uh, fourth axis machine, the uh, Turner, has completed the work on this uh, one part that we have here. You can see that uh, it's to a pretty fine level of detail. From here we take it and uh, do some hand carving to uh, just bring it uh, another step further. Uh, we do a lot of uh, small problem solvers uh, for individuals. Uh, of course, we do large uh, millwork projects as well. But this is a kind of uh, job that uh, we really enjoy taking on. In this case, the client has a vineyard and they make wine uh, as sort of a, a, a hobby. And uh, they had a, a wine barrel left over and they have a, a collection of wine uh, accoutrement. They have these tools of, of bottle overs and whatnot that are antiques. And so we, they wanted to use a wine barrel as the basis of a display case. So what we did was engineer a, 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 a wine barrel top that would be uh, circular like the barrel's uh, geometry and then with glass on top and then it could open as you see here in this uh, uh, photo uh, real uh, rendering here, this representation of it, you can see how the drawer pivots out giving you access to the interior. But we just love to do that kind of oddball problem solving here. It, uh, it thrills the clients and uh, we have fun doing it. Now we have a client that uh, we've done work with uh, over the years and they have a, a pool house, it's called a casita, which means little house in Spanish and uh, uh, it's uh, kind of a den out, outdoors and uh, what we're doing for them here, they have uh, the, the house opens up to the pool area so these four doors will go across the space about 11 feet wide and there'll be a transom above with iron and that'll be about 10 foot tall and uh, and so it'll all bifold back and become an open den to the pool area. So it's kind of a wonderful thing. We'll be doing an effect that makes these appear to be uh, aged and old. All these surfaces will be um, hand planed and uh, sculpted to affect uh, a timber. The wonderful thing about the um, use of the CNC technology is that we've been able to uh, compose across these panels, and there's an additional one here, but this shows the composition for the four panels across. So the four are, are designed as a unified group, uh, and then uh, the panels are then machined individually, and then installed in the doors across this group. So you have uh, a symmetrical but somewhat loose uh, 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 composition in, in grape clusters. I used to uh, do this kind of carving by hand and then over time it became difficult to just set the uh, time aside. The skill sets really aren't available to, to hire and uh, to have a composition that's independent across and not simply a standard cut and paste thing that's applied is something that you can't, simply can't get in the market. The CNC technology has reintroduced the ability to hand carve unique compositions to the piece. So we're able to take these four doors and do, uh, in this case it's symmetrical, some cases, and I can show you other examples, are not, where we have the pieces growing, the, the work will be growing across the piece independently of the piece's geometry, and that's kind of cool. But we're able to, uh, no, this is directly off the machine, then we'll come back and, and hand carve this so we end up with nice and sized points. And this is one of the wonderful, wonderful capabilities that the CNC technology has brought to, to the shop. And uh, the clients appreciate it, I sure enjoy doing it. It uh, leverages things forward and allows you to reapproach uh, uh, this kind of carving again. Uh, something that became impractical and now is within reach. Our process is client focused, so it's not really about any taste I may have or, so, or preference I have. It's about what thrills the client and that's our objective here. So we do a wide variety of work for a wide variety of clients with a range of design vocabularies from extremely contemporary all the way through antique reproductions of various schools of design. I have one panel, there were these four panels, we have one left for the side door that you saw on that uh, design uh, and it's ready to fire up the machine and uh, go to work carving it.
And here's where it all happens. We have the CNC router over here in the shop, uh, obviously uh, taking up the space that it is. It's uh, you know just a wonderful augmentation and a great, great addition of value. Uh, you may have seen the bench areas that we have where the men do the work by hand, but this is right nearby and uh, there's another fellow doing work too. I'm a person who moves slowly and carefully and uh, with a, a relatively small cabinet shop doing this work, uh, CNC technology was a bit of an investment and I watched it for a couple of years or, you know, as it was evolving from being something not unlike computers where they went from being you know, only uh, for the defense industry and NASA uh, to something that is available because of the, uh, the dropping price and the increased value. The CNC uh, machinery went from being prohibitively expensive and over a period of a few years different providers were taking advantage of the evolving technologies uh, to uh, get to the point where they were affordable for small shops like mine. What was attractive about Lagunas was that they were putting this affordability into a model that used some of the classic things that are important in woodworking machinery. One of them is weight that it's on a, uh, a, a, um, a welded steel and cast base. Very, very substantial. It absorbs vibration. You'll see like all the classic woodworking machinery from Oliver or Delta or all these older machines were built on solid cast bases. So there's, they were stationary and all vibration was absorbed. That's, that's fundamental. A lot of the, uh, at the time I looked at and uh, finally made a decision about a CNC router, the other uh, uh, offerings in a similar uh, price point, a similar value point, wa were being put out as assemblies. So they were being made uh, out of aluminum extrusions. Uh, they were bolted together as opposed to welded together. That sort of thing. All that is a, a, an invitation to failure. Whenever you have two things screwed together, at some point they're going to come loose and fall apart. Vibration is going to degrade the object over time. So that was one of the fundamentals that Laguna had right. Uh, and uh, so you tend to think and hope that if they can make that kind of decision and do that right, that um, uh, they'll make uh, similar decisions elsewhere in the technology at the same time. So uh, yeah, I spoke to them over time and, uh, and as I said, I'm a person who approaches these things slowly and carefully and uh, uh, through a kind of a courtship uh, and, and exposure to it, uh, came to a, a level of confidence that Laguna was the choice. And uh, I haven't been disappointed. They, ha they were the choice and, uh, uh, and, and I'm uh, glad to speak well of them at this point. Here we're just using the mechanical hold downs. This panel will take about uh, two, two and a half hours to run. And so uh, we're able to hold it down that way as opposed to running the vacuum pump. And that's the reasoning here. Turning on the controller, here we have the uh, software loaded up to uh, be able to uh, run this, um, this carved panel. Despite what it says, the software always thinks when you start it up that it has the number one tool in it. So what you have to do, this is actually the number eight tool, which will be our roughing cutter. cycle start, it starts the M6 program which will drop off the number one tool and pick up the number eight tool uh, to initiate the rough out of the, uh, of the leaf panel. Because you can see we had the roughing pass that brought the core shape out uh, very efficiently because you're using large cuts with large step overs. See, it was very rough result. So now we're doing a finish pass using a 60 inch radius uh, ball nose uh, cut.
cutter, it's tapered so it's still strong, but it's doing this at 15% step over. So you're thinking about 1 64th of an inch step over as it goes, it's leaving a completely smooth surface, almost sanded. As you can see, we had a very fine surface, surface by choosing to uh, have a small step over with a very small tool. So it's 15% of an eighth of an inch a step over each time. These machines allow this kind of precision. Traditionally, this is all done by hand, uh, but uh, there is no uh, uh, disadvantage to being able to remove 95% of the labor by using the CNC technology and do the final surfaces by hand. You end up with a hand carved object without all that labor. It's two years into it now, and the mach machinery has proven well uh, that it can do the work. Uh, they've stood behind uh, the machinery where we had some uh, of our own uh, growth issues, so like learning how to make use of this stuff. But they have been there. Uh, their, uh, their tech staff is wonderful and helpful, and where we've needed a part or two, they've uh, been right there for us, so uh, no disappointment.